Now, I don't know if you share the same frustration, but I have been looking for the best way of bringing in remote contributors into my production for a long time now. I work on hardware with my live streams and trying to find a way to get reliable, high quality feeds from best contributors into my production has been an absolute pain. Now, just today, we've gotten the release of Zoom ISO 2. And this could be the answer to my question I have been looking for for a long time now, and maybe it's for yours as well. Now, I'm not sponsored by Zoom. This is not um, a sponsored video, but this is just me wanting to show off what seems to be potentially the perfect bit of software to be able to bring these in for mine and maybe your production. So let's jump in there and have a look. So Zoom ISO 2 has just been released today. It was in beta. I did a little bit of playing around then, but it's just come out now. So I've just downed the latest version. At the time of recording, the latest version was 2.0.3. And in the brief testing I've done, it's actually been really good. Now to explain the kind of situations that I'm looking for. So I work on ATM switches. So between ATM minis and ATM constellations. So when I'm trying to find a way of bringing in a remote contributor, for me, having a hardware output is a necessity. Now, previously I've been looking at things like Video Ninja and using the uh, web page out of like an OBS going into a deck link or out through a uh, HDMI output. And that's been working really well. Um, but it is very much a kind of patched together solution. It's, I still have to use converters and things and software to be able to get the thing out. There hasn't been an all in one solution. And I've done a lot of Zoom. Um, uh, Zoom drones as well and having people um, on separate laptops and having pins and things like that. But then I've had sync issues and all these kind of things happening. Not to mention having so many machines to, depending on how many guests I've got coming in. I've also tried Teams. I've tried, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've pretty much tried all of them out there. And a lot of them had their pros and a lot of them had their cons. And this seems to be ticking a lot of those boxes. But one of the big things that I've found and I've been doing a lot of um, uh, live streams for some big multinationals is security. So things, uh, my previous preference was to go for um, Video Ninja, but in a big corporate uh, network environment, WebRTC is just not an option. So finding a reliable bit of software and a secure and safe bit of software has been a necessity. So I've had to go down the Teams road or down the Zoom road. Um, but finally, we've found a way to put it all together. Now I did a video a little while ago about Zoom rooms and how to get NDI out of that. That's been a really um, great thing, but I think we have just beat that. And I wanna show you it to right, right now, which is pretty fun. I'm looking forward to it. So here's a chart showing the difference between the two different bits of software of Zoom ISO and the engine comparison, how they were doing it. In Zoom ISO version one, we can see that it went from the Zoom cloud onto your Zoom client on your computer. Now that was only a total max bandwidth of 24 megabit that could happen for there. Now essentially what it was doing was kind of doing a, a virtual screen grab of a bunch of windows that will open your computer, going for the Mac OS API, then going out export engine, then going for NDI feed, or if you want to go to a SDI for like a deck, deck link, you have to go through Siphon and then through Black Siphon and then up to the deck link card. And while it worked, it definitely was a little bit clunky at, at times. I only used it a few times, but it was definitely clunky at that. Um, but what they've done now is they've gone basically direct straight from Zoom pretty much all the way through. And it's really, really cool. So from Zoom Cloud, they've got um, an, a total bandwidth of up to 100 meg. Now, apparently they are uh, working on releasing a high bandwidth mode for Zoom. So basically you just get a full feed all the way from Zoom servers to your machine. Now it is using the um, Apple Silicon uh, engine on the Apple Silicon itself. Now this does work on older Intel Macs. Oh, by the way, this only works on Mac. This is not a PC app, this is purely for Mac. Um, but if you've got anything Apple Silicon, this is using the hardware engine on your device to make this uh, smoother and better basically. Um, and then straight from that engine, it's going straight out NDI, Siphon, um, Deck Link, or a display output. So you're kind of taking it all those middlemen, you're not doing any screen grabs, it's all going straight from Zoom all the way to your device, which in my mind is a lot better and it's a lot more reliable. Um, now I've heard that you can get up to, on a base model Mac mini or MacBook Air, you can get eight 1080p feeds all the way through once the high bandwidth has been released, which should be probably already by the time this uh, video is out, which is really impressive. Eight videos, so that's like a, a deck link quad, which will give you all eight feeds, which is really, really cool. I mean, I personally would prefer to have a few extra just so you have a bit more um, redundancy, but apparently with a Mac Studio, you can 
fill that right up and get a lot more people, which is crazy, crazy, but really exciting. So let me give you a rundown of my build here. So my build here, I've just done a little temporary setup to a similar thing that I would do in my live streams. So I've got my Mac um, M1 Max um, decked out laptop here. Now I've got an M1 Air, uh, which I could have used, but it just so happened that this is all plugged in and ready to go. Um, now that's going into a Thunderbolt dock, which is holding a DeckLink Duo 2. That is a system that I've used for a while. It's just a great Thunderbolt thing, plug in, yeah, four outputs, off you go. Uh, out of that, I'm going into a ATEM SDO Extreme ISO, which I'm using to record this as well as all the feeds so we can see what's going on and also recording the multi-view so that you can see all of the picture feeds as well as all the audio feeds as well. Um, and that's basically that. So I'm recording everything on the ATEM ISO. I've got the deck link card, which is going to give me the four SDI outputs. In this demo, I'm going to show only uh, SDI outputs, um, but NDI works easier than anything. And I'll show you how that, how that works in the system. Um, but right now, I've got a call open with three different Zoom clients uh, loaded. The reason I've done three is that I want to try out the screen capture, sorry, the, uh, the screen share output as well, because there's definitely times where you've got a guest coming in, they've got a PowerPoint that they want to share as well, and we want to have that as a separate feed. So might as well give that a shot. So here we have the window. So right now, I've got the Zoom ISO settings here on the left. This is where you control everything. Uh, up the top here, I've got the window, which is linking with Zoom ISO 2 on the left here. So Zoom ISO is basically running the Zoom client. It is it is Zoom. Um, and that runs all together. So when you load the software, it will say, hey, do you want to log in? Do you want to join a call? So what I did is I just joined a call here. Um, and I also did that to show you what would happen if you were to join another call, because you do need at least co-host privileges for this to work. Um, now, the bottom here is I've just loaded Zoom on this computer as well, just to have more pictures and feeds, that kind of thing. So this is the actual host of the meeting right now. And I've got a, uh, a laptop over here, which is showing the, uh, which is just a, another feed. Um, so how do we get this to work? Now, the way that they've done this is it's basically grabbing from Zoom directly. Um, but you need to enable the output engine. But before we do that, we actually have to select how many outputs we are trying to output and the resolution and the frame rate. Now, the thing that's different between this and say Zoom Rooms, for example, is that when you set a resolution and frame rate, it will output that frame rate regardless of what's coming into Zoom. So if they're sending a 360p feed to Zoom at whatever frame rate fluctuating all around, it will always output your 1080 or whatever resolution you decide to output. Now that's different to Zoom Rooms, which depending on the network and all these kind of things can jump up and down, which will make things like vMix and a whole bunch of different software not happy because the actual screen size is changing. So this is really cool because it will actually output what you put into it. So in this situation, I'm going to have four outputs and I'm going to output 1080p at 2997, which is my um, uh, recording frame rate for this video. Um, so now, once we set that up, we'll be able to see um, all the outputs here. So we've got four outputs and here are the settings. So you can see that the frame rate is kind of fluctuating a little bit. This is what's coming from Zoom. So don't worry about that. That's not what's going out. That's just coming what's coming in. So you can see how the frame rate is a bit all over the place. I mean, it's only within frame, so it's still pretty good. but you can see that it is not a stable connection coming out, but what is going out is stable, which is exactly what we want. Now, what we are wanting to do here is we are wanting to set up, uh, we'll say the first three as participants. So you've got participants, screen share, active speaker, or spotlight. Um, now there's a lot of ways you can choose different things, but in this situation, we'll go participant. Um, <clears throat> now what we'll do is I'll actually go through and show you the output so you can see what's happening and it will populate on the multi-view which I'll put on the screen. So I'll do output one. Now it's gonna tell you to um, check your um, Blackmagic desktop configuration on this. Now I've already got mine set up as all outputs. So if you have already key and fill turned on and some weird things, make sure you go through and send them all to output of one to four. Um, so I'll output one. Now what also is happening, so you can see that I've set up here as a test card to show up as I am uh, if there's no participants or no one going through. So as I go through, you can see that these test cards are all populating. So now we have four test cards. 
Um, now they are working on putting numbers and character generation generators on this. So this is um, gonna be very handy to be able to know which, make sure you've got the right ports plugged in. Um, and through here, I can actually assign all the resolutions, but I've set everything to 1080p2997, and that is exactly where I want it. Now, um, before we start looking at participants, we have to look into audio. Now, at the time of recording, there is no way of getting embedded audio straight from Zoom ISO, but there is a workaround which works just as well. It just requires a little bit of tinkering on the other side. Now, if you're using NDI, you will get embedded audio. So if I choose NDI, for example, you can choose the embedded audio to be either all, which will do its usual Zoom mix, or an ISO. Now for me, I need my ISO mixes. I wanna be able to mix it myself, be able to mute people, unmute people, do what I want in the console, EQ people's differently. So having ISO is a necessity for me. So I'm gonna bring that back to DeckLink. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either use the audio MIDI setup and make an aggregate device. Because basically what we're trying to do is get four, oh, well, as many channels as you want from Zoom ISO to go out your DeckLink uh, device using the built-in drivers. Um, because Zoom ISO itself is actually using the DeckLink drivers to be able to output the video. So I haven't set that up here, but what I have used and said is loopback. Now loopback is a relatively inexpensive bit of software which will give you the ability to route audio from wherever you want to wherever you want. Now I've already set this up. So I've set up a device. Now this is just a loopback device. So it'll show up as a audio device and I've set it to pass through. So I've got four channels coming in and the channels coming in are mono. Um, so basically what I'm trying to do is go from the pass through, so channel one, for example, along to, these are just the output channels, the so channels one, two, three, four. And then from those, I wanna to go to each deck link. So you can see that I've gone to channel one is going to outputs one and two on deck link one. Now, if you want to use multiple channels of SDI, so you've got 16 channels there, if you want to de-embed them on the other end, you can just send it to one output and you can set your outputs there. But for me, the way that I work is I've got an ATEM Constellation 8K and I use the MADI de-embed on those channels to be able to go into the mixer. So I want to have my channel one go through output one, my channel two go through output two, so that I get the audio lined up in sync with the original video. So that is what I've done here. And this is all tested and working and I'll show you how that goes as well. Now, since we're in the call, we can now actually start, oh, sorry, I'll actually go through first and show you how I've done that. So now in the audio mapping, now you can actually do a lot of things. You can also add like a Dante virtual sound card. So if you wanna um, map all your channels to Dante, for example, you can add all 64 and off you go. Um, but in this demo, I'm showing the SDI output. So you, each channel you can uh, select to be multiple things. You can dedicate them to a participant. You can choose the output or you can choose a mix or turn it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose output. So in a situation where I've got hundred guests sitting in a, in a, in a Zoom call, uh, when I pick my participants and put them into an output or a whole, whatever you wanna call it, um, that means that that audio will go out the video and the audio line at the same time in sync exactly how we like it. So I'm gonna set these all as outputs and I'm gonna select output one, two, three, and four. So now the out channels one and one to four, which is going out outputs one to four on the deck link card is gonna have audio there. Now, I missed one crucial step is we haven't actually enabled the output engine to be able to output from Zoom. Now there's a few things we have to do before we do this. So what Zoom needs is the ability to record the meeting on the Zoom ISO um, device. Sorry, in the Zoom ISO software. So what's happening here is it's not actually using the record function. It's using the record function as basically a, a permission. So when you do it, when you join a meeting and you someone records, you'll see a pop-up saying that someone is recording. So I'll do that um, now. So what I'll do is on this um, output here, this is my participant link. So I'm going to assign uh, Zoom ISO as a co-host, just for an example. Um, so I'm gonna make a co-host and now our, we, now we are a co-host. And you might've seen down the bottom is we have the option now to enable the Zoom engine. Um, so what I'll do is that if I press this, now we'll get a pop-up on everyone's device saying that 
we uh, the meeting has been recorded. Now it's technically not being recorded, but we're just using this as an engine as a um, a pop up so that people can see. Oh, this could be going somewhere because you know people um, like to know that they are potentially being recorded or uh, being broadcast. Um, but that is what they are doing. So you are still able to record on other computers as co-hosts. Um, but it does mean that you can be, a, you can be a co-host and you can still get these privileges that you need to be able to do this broadcast. Um, so I'm going to hit, got it. And we'll have an icon saying that it's recording. Um, but we now have our output engine enabled. So if we go through and we tick number one here, you can see that our um, number one has one of the video feeds in there. Um, I'll go number two, and we see number two has popped up there as well. And we'll go number three, and now we have three um, outputs going to the deck link. Really, really cool. And it's just as easy as that. And the actual uh, window here is uh, quite intuitive too. So you can say, all right, if someone wants to talk, put up your hand, raise your hand in, um, in Zoom, and you can, um, populate this list of just hands raised, uh, people with audio on, people with video on, uh, panelists. So it's easy to try and find people in here, or you can actually just filter participant via name or however you like to do that to do. So it's a really cool setup. Um, so now we can see that we have two 1080 outputs, one 720 output, and the last one is not being used at all. Um, now in terms of the quality output, the you will only get as high a quality as your meeting permits. So for example, if you're using just a standard Zoom um, login, you will only get up to 360p outputs for all your, all your um, participants. Now you can still obviously output 1080p via your Declan card as the resolution, but the feed going into it will only be up to 360. If you have a Zoom room attached to your uh, meeting, you can that's a easy way to get a, a bump up to 720. Or if you have a pro or enterprise account, um, you can also request to enable 1080p in that account. But again, the you only get the highest quality of the meeting permits. Um, now I have a, access to a enterprise account, so that's how I'm getting the um, 1080 output, but I also wanna show you the best possible quality that you can get out of this. And you know, so far it's looking pretty good. We've got um, a bunch of computers going. Now obviously these are on Wi-Fi and it's not the perfect situation, but we are still getting 1080 and the frame rate is pretty solid, which is really exciting. Um, now, the fun thing about all this is I'm gonna make sure everything is muted so that we don't break things. Now, if I go through and unmute um, Zoom 1, you can now see that there's audio coming out of the line of Zoom 1. Now, that is not going through any of the other ones, which is exactly what we want. Now, if I go through the second person, we're seeing audio coming out there as well. Um, now, that's pretty exciting. Um, that's exactly what we want to see. Um, so now if I was to put this into a switcher, into an audio console, I would I'd be able to see all of my outputs. Really, really cool. Now, one thing I haven't actually tried yet is a screen share because we've all been in situations where we want to do a screen share um, for, you know, they want to show their presentation. So what I'll do here is I'll go to screen share and I'll screen share the same screen that we're working on at the moment. And now, um, obviously all the Zooms kind of shuffled around, but I'm still getting a clean feed of all my contestants on my multi-view here. Now, if I go to, um, so it's not gonna show up as a participant, but if I go to outputs here and I choose the screen share and choose the screen share from, uh, I believe it's gonna be Ryan Summerfield. There we go. We now have the screen share um, being output as well as the video, which is coming from camera two here, um, coming from the Wonder computer as two separate output devices, which is super, super cool. So that's it from me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. This has been a interesting one. Like it's been a long journey. Now, if you haven't actually seen, I did a, a, a series with John Barker uh, on return feed. We spent six weeks looking at all the different methods of uh, giving contributors into a live recording. And well, this wasn't out by then, so interested to see how, if we did that again, what that would look like. But if you um, if you enjoyed this content, let me know down below and uh, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.